good morning everyone so now we are going to study about the digestion in the stomach and intestines means how digestion occur how the mechanical and chemical break, breakdown of the food particles in the stomach and intestine so first we have to understand about the objective of this topic so explain the gross morphology and structure and function of intestine we must understood about the anatomy and physiology of the stomach and intestine both in, if in case if we are going to understand about the digestion process how metabolism and digestion occur identify the various types of the enzyme and juice that is involved in the digestion process we have to identify them and what is the process of hcl production so these all will be the objectives now learning outcomes will be like to understand about the function of intestine chemical regulation of digestions different act digestive activity that occur in the stomach and the intestines how the food will passes from them different digestive activity and the secretion produced by the stomach so these all be the learning outcomes now come to the point mechanical and chemical digestion in the stomach several minutes after food enter the stomach a gentle rippling peristaltic movement called the mixing wave pass over the stomach every 15 to 25 seconds these wave macerate the food mix it with the secretion of the gastric glands and reduce it to a supply liquid called the soupy liquid called the chyme few mixing waves are observed in the fungus which primarily has a storage function as digestion proceed in the stomach more vigorous mixing wave begin at the body of the stomach and intensify as they reach the pylorus the pyloric sphincter not only really remain almost but not completely closed so how the digestion will help how the uh, wave how the peristaltic movement will help in this process as you can see here the stomach have every 15 to 25 second there is the peristaltic movement the rippling crinkling will be there so these type of of the wave so when the wall of the elementary canal will having the peristaltic movement so that means they mix the food they macerate the food so this food will help to macerate and mix the food to whom with the gastric juice that will secreted by the different gastric glands so when the gastric juice are mixed with this food yeah you can say when the secretion of the gastric is mixed with this food it will form a soupy liquid okay just uh, it uh, easy things when the food is going to mix with the some secretion now it will be, be uh, called the soupy liquid that will be called the chyme so when food goes into the stomach in the stomach gastric juices is there so food and gastric juices are combined to each other mix mix to each other that will be called the chyme few mixing waves are observed in the fundus also so it will helps to churning the foods while stomach is act as a storage as a reservoir for the food it will also help in the this cases several uh, times as the digestion going to proceed in the stomach this mixing waves became strong and strong okay so it will also intensify uh, into the stomach and reaches the pylorus now if the pylorus uh, in the earlier classes i explained about the pyloric entrum pyloric canal and then there is a pylorus sphincter will be there so if the pyloric is sphincter is closed and sphincter is just on the neck of the you can say small intestine duodenum okay so stomach and intestine between the stomach and intestine there is a duodenum uh, that means the first part of the intestine duodenum so between the stomach and duodenum there is a pyloric sphincter this is sphincter is act like a gate guard if it is a closed then the food will not allowed to pass from stomach to the intestine 
and if this gate is open that means the food can easily pass from the stomach to the intestine so when a small amount of the food passes from the stomach to the intestine after that this gate will be closed so until that food is metabolized digested and absorbed into the intestine gate will not open after digestion and after absorption gate will open and again a small amount of the food will passes from the stomach to intestine again okay so by this the slowly slowly the stomach is going to empty so as food reaches the pylorus each mixing wave periodically forces about the 3 ml of the chyme into the duodenum through the pyloric sphincter a phenomena known as the gastric emptying okay that means gastric emptying gastric means uh, we are talking about the stomach emptying means to make it blank to make it empty khali kar dena so in this case how much taken how much time taken by the stomach to make themselves empty okay how much time taken by the stomach that the chyme is passes into the duodenum through the pyloric sphincter so this process is known as the gastric emptying most of the chyme is forced back into the body of the stomach where mixing continue because you can understand when the food is going to pass from the stomach to the intestine it will go through the uh, duodenum through the pyloric sphincter now sphincter is closed now food food is again going to back into the <coughs> body part of the stomach where the mixing is happening where the churning is happening so the next wave pushes the chyme forward again and forces a little more into the duodenum so when the next wave wave will come it will again forces the food into the duodenum and after the small amount of going into the duodenum again the pyloric sphincter will be closed and the remaining food will be come into the stomach body so these forward and backward movement of the gastric content are are so responsible for mixing in the stomach okay so you can understand when a uh, food goes into the duodenum and uh, with that a small amount of the food is come back into the body of the stomach so this going and coming movement that means backward and forward movement will again help into the mixed with during this time digestion by salivary amylase continue now this is the time when digestion will be start by salivary amylase and it will be goes to continue soon how we heard the churning action mixes the kai with the acidic gastric juice inactivating salivary amylase and activating lingual lipase which start to digest the triglyceride into the fatty acid and triglyceride now this is this slide is the important thing because it will going to tell you how it can be metabolized how it can be going to break down of the certain food particles now digestion by salivary amylase is continue so soon however the churning action mixes the chyme with acidic gastric juice inactivating salivary amylase and activating the lingual lipase salivary amylase when is going to the into the stomach now is stomach having the acidic environment so there is the acidic gastric juices will be there so it will causes the inactivating the salivary amylase and activating the lingual lipase now this will start to digest the triglyceride into the fatty acid and triglyceride so there is a breakdown of the triglyceride product into the triglyceride and fatty acid although parietal cells secrete the hydrogen ions and chloride ions separately into the stomach and it will causes the secretion of hydrochloric acid hcl so hcl production is in the stomach how it's a production due to the parietal cell parietal cell secrete the hydrogen ions separately and chloride ions separately in the lumens so when the hydrogen and chloride in the lumen will gonna to uh, combine it will form the hcl proton pump powered by the hydrogen potassium atp is actively transport hydrogen into the lumen while bringing potassium into the cell at the same time chloride 
and potassium diffuse out into the lumen through the chloride and potassium channel in the apical membrane. I will show you a uh, images so that I will explain these all the things. There is another enzyme that is carbonic anhydride and which is especially plentiful in parietal cell. Carbonic anhydrase is a much uh, much enough plentiful abundant in a parietal cell catalyze the formation of carbonic acid so it will helping in the catabolize catalyzes the increase the reaction increase the formation of the carbonic acid from water and carbon dioxide so by the water and carbon dioxide carbonic acid will form h2co3 will form and due to the reason carbonic anhydrase enzyme so carbonic anhydrase will present when the water and carbon dioxide okay so it will form the carbonic acid h2co3 as carbonic acid dissociate it provide a ready source for h plus ion proton pump but also generate the bicarbonate ion h2co3 there is the carbonic acid is there so when the h2co3 is gonna to dissociate the H plus ion will be separate and HCO3 ion will be separate. So HCO3 ions build up in the cytosol and it exists the parietal cell in exchange of the chloride via the antiporter. Which antiporter? Chloride and bicarbonate antiporter. Now in this case we have to understand bicarbonate, okay, carbonic acid dissociate into the H plus ion and the bicarbonate ions. Now this bicarbonate ion build up in the cytosol, okay, and it will exit the parietal cell by in the exchange of the chloride with the help of the chloride and bicarbonate antiporter in the basolateral membrane. So bicarbonate diffuses into the near blood capillaries. This alkaline tide of bicarbonate ion entering the bloodstream after a meal may be large enough to elevate the blood pH slightly and make urine more alkaline. So this is the reason that will cause the blood pH slightly alkaline and make the urine is also alkaline. So the HCl secretion by the parietal cell can be stimulated by the several sources like the acetylcholine released by parasympathetic neurons, gastrin secretion by the G cell, histamine which is a paracrine substance released by the mast cells in the nearby lamina propria, acetylcholine and the gastrin stimulate the parietal cells to secrete more HCl in the presence of histamine. So it is also a reason that the gastrin is called the potent ulcer inducer because gastrin will stimulate the parietal cell to secrete the HCl. The strongly acidic fluid of the stomach kills many microbes in the foods. HCl partially denature the proteins in the food and stimulate the secretion of hormone that promote the flow of bile and pancreatic juice. Enzymatic digestion of protein also began in the stomach. The only proteolytic enzyme in the stomach is a pepsin which is secreted by the chief cell. Okay, so uh, pepsin that is secreted by the chief cell, the pepsin uh, severe certain peptides bond between the amino acids, break down the protein chain of many amino acids into the smaller peptide fragments. Pepsin is most effective in a very acidic environment of the stomach and it becomes inactive at a higher pH. What keeps pepsin from digesting the protein in the stomach cell along with the food? If there is a secretion of the pepsin by the chief cells and pepsin will help to digest the proteins, denature the proteins. Okay. So if Pepsin will help in the proteolytic enzyme denature of the protein, digesting the protein. So what keeps the pepsin from digesting the protein in the stomach cell? First, pepsin is secreted in an inactive form that will be called the pepsinogen. So when we, it will be secreted, it cannot be digested the cell's own protein. Okay? Because we know the pepsin is a protein digesting enzyme. So when the pepsin will be secreted by the chief cell, the cell having, every cell having the protein, 
so that is can causes the digestion of the cell protein so this is the reason pepsin is always secreted in active form that will be called the pepsinogen okay. so it cannot digest the protein in the chip cells that produce it now pepsinogen is not converted into the active pepsin until it comes in the contact with the hydrochloric acid secreted by parietal cell or active pepsin molecule so when the pepsinogen in come in the contact with the hydrochloric acid okay now hcl is secreted by the parietal cell h plus and cl minus ion okay while pepsinogen is secreted by the chief cell so when the pepsinogen is gonna to meet with this hcl it will become the active pepsin molecules okay now it will gonna to digest the proteins second the stomach epithelial cell are protected from the gastric juice by 1 to 3 mm thick layer of the alkaline mucus secreted by surface mucus cell and mucus next cell we know in the stomach there is a gastric juice is there that contains the highly acidic environment is there so how can the stomach wall is protected by this acidic environment if there is a acid in the stomach so that means acid comes in the contact with the stomach wall so how the stomach is still protected so that due to, due to the reason of the mucus secreted uh, cells like the surface mucus cell and mucus next cell so another enzyme of the stomach is a gastric lipase which is split the short chain triglyceride in fat molecules into fatty acid and the monoglyceride a monoglyceride consists of a glycerol molecules that is attached to one fatty acid molecules this enzyme which has a limited role in the adult stomach operate best at a ph of 5 to 6 more important than either lingual lipase or gastric lipase is a pancreatic lipase an enzyme secreted by the pancreas into the small intestine only a small amount of nutrients are absorbed in the stomach because it is epithelial cells are impermeable to most material so digestion will be occurred in the stomach it is correct but stomach cannot be absorb the all nutrients so only a small amount of the nutrients can be absorbed through the stomach because it has the impermeable membranes epithelial cells are impermeable for the most of the material so it cannot be absorbed however mucus cell of the stomach absorbs some water ions short chain fatty acid as well as the certain drugs and alcohol within 2 to 4 hours after eating a meal the stomach has emptied its content into the duodenum so stomach will take 2 to 4 hours until the empty and uh, where it will be empty the food contains it will empty into the small intestine time duodenum parts and it will take how much time 2 to 4 hours so food rich in carbohydrate is spend the last and spend the least time in the stomach those foods which are rich in the carbohydrate that is been the uh, minimum time in the stomach high protein food remain the somewhat longer those foods who have the large number of the proteins in the foods will remains in the stomach for long time and emptying is a slower after a fat laden meal containing the large amount of triglyceride so now these are the images you can see how the hcl will produced 
secretion of axial hydrochloric acid by the parietal cell in the stomach. You can see there is a yellow color is the chyme in the stomach lumen, pink that will be parietal cells and blue that is the interstitial fluids and the blood capillaries is there, the lamina propria. You can see the pink color that is a parietal cell structure. This parietal cells will contains the water and carbon dioxide H2O plus CO2. You can see the reaction is mentioned H2O and CO2. So H2O and CO2 in the presence of carbonic and hydrase enzyme as I told you in the earlier uh, slides. Carbonic and hydrase enzyme will catalyze the reaction of H2O and water and form the carbonic acid H2CO3. This carbonic acid will dissociate into the H plus ion and HCO3 minus ion bicarbonate ion. This bicarbonate HCO3 ions will go into the interstitial fluid okay, and goes into the blood stream and make the blood alkaline. Similarly, it will go into the interstitial intestines when the chloride alumin comes with the help of the chloride and biocarbonate NP water. Okay, so here is a chloride and biocarbonate antiporter is there. So bicarbonate will be goes into the interstitial fluids through the basolateral membrane and chloride will ion will come in, in the parietal cell and then through the apical membrane it will also leave the parietal cell and goes into the lumen with the help of the chloride channel. So by this process, the H2O plus CO2 in the presence of carbonic and hydrogen enzymes, this process will be happened. Now H plus ion is again going into the lumen with the help of the proton pump. That will be the hydrogen potassium ATPase pump. So by using the hydrogen potassium ATPase pump, hydrogen is in the lumen and chloride is also in the lumen. So this H plus ion and Cl minus ion will meet in this case and form the hydrochloric acid HCl will be produced. So this process is continuing. <coughs> now you have to understand when we want to reduce the gastric acid secretion or when we want to uh, inhibit the production of the HCl, what can we do? We just inhibit the, this process, either chloride cannot be reaches into the lumen or either H plus ion cannot be reaches into the lumen. So there is a no combining of the H plus ion and Cl ion. So HCl will not produce. So we can inhibit the proton pump. If proton pump is the dad pump that is acting by, uh, you can say, producing the H plus ion okay, into the lumen. So proton pump, hydrogen potassium ATP is pump. If we block it, if we block the hydrogen potassium ATP is pump, what will happen? H plus ion will not go into the lumen. So if the H plus ion will not go into the lumen, then HCl will not produce. So it will happen in the cases of the uh, peptic uh, ulcer uh, disease. So in the peptic ulcer disease portion, the doctor prescribe the medicine proton pump in it like the omeprazole, pentoprazole, ramaprazole. So these are the drugs that is comes and bind with the proton pump and inhibit their action. So if the proton pump is not working, so SCL will be not produced. Now these are the several number of the cells like the cheap cell secrete the pepsinogen and pepsin the activated form break down the protein into the peptides secrete the gastric lipase, split the triglyceride into the fatty acid and monoglyceride. Parietal cell will be there that will be secreted the hydrochloric acid and kill the microbes in the food, denature the proteins, convert pepsinogen into the pepsin. Secret the intrinsic factor is there. Now intrinsic factor is the important for the absorption of the vitamin B12, which is used in the erythropoiesis, that is the red blood cell formation. So parietal cell having the brilliant function, it will also helping in the secretion of the hydrochloric acid that will kill, kill the microbes in the food, denature the proteins, convert the pepsinogen into pepsin, inactive to 
active form. So these are the function of the hydrochloric acid. Simultaneously, it will secrete the intrinsic factor. It will be helping in the vitamin B12 absorption. Third one is the surface mucus cells and the mucus neck cell. So secrete the mucus. It will help to secrete the mucus that will form a protective barrier that prevent the digestion of the stomach wall. If the stomach wall is not covered with this mucus, then acid will directly come in the contact of the stomach wall and the wall is going to digest it. Wall is going to break down, rupture. So it will causes the ulcer. So this can be protected by the this mucus. So mucus make a protective layer surrounding the stomach wall. Absorption is there. The small quantity of water, iron, salts and fatty acid and some drugs enter the bloodstream. G cell is there. G cell will secrete the gastrin. It will stimulate the parietal cells to secrete the HCL and chief cell. Now G cell will cause the stimulation of the parietal cells to secrete the HCL and the chief cell to secrete the pepsinogen, contract lower esophageal sphincter, increases the mortality of the stomach and relax the pyloric sphincter. Mascularies is there that will be helping in the mixing the waves. Macerate the food and mix it with gastric juice forming the chyme. Now G cell and mascularies uh, there are different things, but there sometimes you can see the similar things. G cell is going to stimulate the parietal cell to secrete the HCL and chief cell to secrete the pepsinogens that will contain the lower esophageal sphincter, increase the mortality of the stomach, relax the pyloric sphincter, while muscularies will help into the mixing the food, macerate the foods with the gastric juice forming the chyme. Peristalsis is also by the muscularies. So this peristalsis will forces the chyme through the pyloric sphincters and it will goes into the duodenum. Pyloric sphincters, the open to permit the passes to the chyme into the duodenum, regulate the passes of the chyme from the stomach to the duodenum, prevent the backflow of chyme from the duodenum to the stomach. Now there is a small intestine. Most digestion and absorption of nutrients occur in a long tube called the small intestine. Because of this, its structure is specially adapted for this function. So, the digestion, most of the digestion and absorption of the foods, of the nutrients, are occur in this small intestines. Its length alone provides a large surface area for the digestion and absorption. And that area is further increased by the circular folds, villi, and that will call the villi and microvilli. The small intestines begin at the pyloric sphincter of the stomach, coils to the central and inferior parts of the abdominal cavity and eventually open into the large intestine. You will see there is a uh, tetanum, jejunum and ileum that goes for the large intestines. It averages about 2.5 cm in a diameter, its length about 3 meter in a living person and about 6.5 in a cadaver due to the loss of his smooth muscle tone after the death. The small intestine is divided into three regions. The duodenum, the shortest region, is a retroperitoneal. It starts at the pyloric sphincter of the stomach and extends about 25 cm until it merges with the duodenum. Duodenum means 12. So it is so named because it is about as long as the width of the 12 finger. So it will call the duodenum. The jejunum is about 1 meter, 3 feet long and extend to the ileum. Jejunum means impity, which is how it is found, found at death. The final and the longest region of the small intestine is the ileum, that is the twisted form. So measures about 2 meter, 6 feet and joins the large intestine at the smooth muscle sphincter that will be called the iliochical sphincter. So iliochical sphincters are the area where the large intestine and the small intestine will be connected. The wall of the small intestine is composed of the same four layers that make up the most of the GIT tract. We studied in the last classes, mucosa, submucosa, mesularies and serosha. Same four in the all elementary canals. So yes, in the intestine, it is of these four layers. So the mucosa is composed of a layer of the epithelium, lamina propria and muscularis mucosa. 
द एपिथेलियम लेयर ऑफ द स्मॉल इंटेस्टाइन मिकोसा कंसिस्ट ऑफ द सिंपल कॉलोनर एपिथेलियम दैट कंटेन्स मेनी टाइप ऑफ द सेल्स एब्जॉर्प्टिव सेल ऑफ द एपिथेलियम डाइजेस्ट एंड एब्जॉर्ब द न्यूट्रिएंट इन स्मॉल इंटेस्टाइन्स काइंड आल्सो प्रेजेंट इन द एपिथेलियम आर द गोब्लेट सेल्स व्हिच आर सिक्रीट म्यूकस द स्मॉल इंटेस्टाइन मिकोसा कंटेन्स मेनी डीप क्रिवाइसेस लाइन विद द ग्लैंडुलर एपिथेलियम the cells lining the uh, crevices from the intestinal glands that is known as the crypt of the liver cans and secrete the intestinal juice beside absorptive cells and the goblet cell the intestinal glands also contain the pineal cells and intraendocrine cells now the pineal cell will help in the secretion of the lysozyme a bacterial enzyme that is capable for phagocytosis so pineal cell may have a role in regulating the microbial population in the small intestine so when <coughs> there is a microbial population will be developed in the small intestine this pineal cell will regulate control and eradicate them so three type of and second is the intraendocrine cells so three type of the intraendocrine cells are found in the intestinal glands of the small intestine s cell ckk cell and k cell so these which secrete the hormones secretin cholecystokinin or you can say the ckk and glucose dependent insulinotropic peptide or cip is the respectively secreted the lamina propria of the small intestine mucosa contains the areolar connective tissue and hence abundance of the malt the solitary lymphatic nodules are the most numerous in the distal part of the ileum groups of the lymphatic nodules referred to as aggregated lymphatic follicles are also present in the ileum the muscular is mucosa of the small intestine mucosa consist of the smooth muscles now the role of intestines we will discuss in the uh, later classes what what is the role of the intestines we will start from the next classes before that we are uh, having some uh, quiz for you so you can uh, see you can understand these are uh, these quizzes first question is from which of the gut structure below is most digested food absorbed duodenum stomach ileum and ascending colon duodenum is a small intestine part stomach is there ileum is again duodenum duodenum and ileum is small intestine part and ascending colon so the most food digested from the gut structure is the ileum which hormone stimulate the release of bile and pancreatic juice cholecystokinin secretin intestinal gastrin pepsin so yes cholecystokinin cck is there we just i mentioned earlier cck stimulate the release of bile and pancreatic juice which of the following gut structure are listed in the corrected order that food would pass through them from input to exit which of the following gut structure are listed in the correct order that food would pass to them now there is a uh, four option is there and these option is the just uh, jumblings now you have to make the correct order because these order are the shuffle here okay so you have to make the correct first pyloric sphincter the food first come in the pyloric sphincter then goes to ileum then goes to jejunum then goes to transverse column or food first comes in the pancreas then goes to jejunum ascending colon then sigmoid colon the yeah, food come from the ileum to duodenum to ascending colon to ascending colon a uh, food first come the duodenum then ileum then cecum then transverse colon so you have to choose the which one is the correct order first a option is the pyloric sphincter okay food comes from the pyloric sphincter then it will goes to the ileum no before ileum the food comes into the duodenum so this a is incorrect second pancreas food ever goes into the pancreas no food goes into the stomach then uh, then intestine then duodenum uh, to the intestine there is no food comes in the pancreas pancreas is a accessory digestive uh, organs that will secrete the pancreatic juice into the duodenum for helping in the digestion so b is again incorrect c ileum okay food comes into the ileum small intestine then from ileum food can go to the duodenum 
No, it's incorrect. Deuteronomy comes first before the ilium. So when the food will come in the Deuteronomy, then it will can goes into the ilium. But food cannot go the reverse because ilium is further from the Deuteronomy. So yes, C is incorrect again. Now we have the answer number D. Food comes into the Deuteronomy. Okay, from the stomach, food comes into the Deuteronomy. Okay, then from Deuteronomy, food goes into the ilium. Okay, it is also correct. Then Deuteronomy is Jejunum and Ilium. So yes, from Deuteronomy it can goes into the Ilium. Then from Ilium it can goes into the Cecum. Okay, it is also correct. So, because Cecum is a large intestine part. So yes, Cecum is okay. From Cecum it goes to the transverse colon. Now, in the large intestine, you will see there is a Cecum, colon and rectum. First comes Cecum, then column. Column having the ascending column, transverse column and descending column then rectum so yes obviously from cecum it will goes into the column so it's a transverse column so yes answer d is correct now which statement about the layer of the elementary canal is correct now we focus which statement there are the following four statement as there and you have to make the correct choose the correct statement about the layer of elementary canal first the serosa absorb the product of digestion serosa absorb the product of digestion b mucosa protect against self digestion c the submucosa is involved in segmentation and peristalsis d the muscularis is external stains connective tissue so in these all four things the b is correct the mucosa protect against the self digestion next question will be there which of the following pair of substance are not secreted by the stomach as a part of the gastric juice which of the following pairs now there is a list of the four pairs four name of the gastric secretions so which one of the following pair of substance are not secreted by the stomach so that is not secreted by the stomach as a part of the gastric juice first hydrochloric acid and pepsinogen i think both are secreted into the stomach hydrochloric acid is secreted by the parietal cell as well as pepsinogen will secreted by the chief cell and these all cell will present in the stomach so stomach secreted the these thing and these are the part of the gastric juice so obviously a is incorrect hormone and intrinsic factor is there it is also incorrect why intrinsic factor that will helping in the absorption of the vitamin b12 is needed also secreted by the parietal cell parietal cell secrete the axial and intrinsic factor so yes it's incorrect hormone is there gastrin g cell is secreted for some hormones the stomach is again secreted this B point. Now C is the nucleus and amylase, and D is the mucus and gastrin. Mucus is secreted by the mucus and mucus next cell. Gastrin is secreted by the G cell. So A, B, C, A, B, and D. These three cannot be the correct answer. So which one is the correct that is not secreted by the stomach? The nucleus and amylase. Nucleus and amylase is cannot secreted by the stomach as a part of the gastric juice. So yes, answer C is correct. Now, last question. From which of the gut structure below is most digested food absorbed? From which of the gut structure below is most digested food absorbed? So there are the several names of the gut structure either duodenum, stomach, ileum and ascending column. Now we have to choose one correct. Duodenum is there. Duodenum is the area from where the stomach will pass the food into the intestine. So first come at the duodenum. And duodenum is the area where the most of the enzyme and juices are secreted through the pancreas and the bile is also secreted at the duodenum. So it will help to make them the soupy all, soupy again <coughs> and helping in the digestion. But the question is, most digested food absorbed in which area? C, uh, B is the stomach, stomach, 
is act as a reservoir mixing the food with the gastric juices make a kind c ileum is there pedunum jejunum ileum ileum is again part of the small intestine and the maximum absorption is happen in the ileum so yes ileum is correct answer d d is the ascending colon Ascending colon is a part of the large intestine. It will also helping into the digestion. But you can see the water is the most often reabsorbed from the this area, as compared to food. So yes, C is the correct answer. Now you have to go through the some reference book. After uh, I explained about the intestinal chemical digestions. you have to read these things about the book so there are the list of the books that will help you to go in the deep about the digestions tartora gerard and directions plan books that will be the principal in anatomy and physiology it's a brilliant and excellent book of the human anatomy and physiology second books of the bill melinda anatomy and physiology and third one is the robins and cotron robin and cotron books is not for the anatomy and physiology it's for the patho pathological basis of disease why i mention this books because when you will study about the digestive system when you study about the every part every organ involved in the digestion you will know digestion is digestive system is the most important if digestive system is going to malfunction or abnormalities is there there is the disease will developed there are the lots of the disease will developed due to the digestion so it will causes the how the disease will develop what is the pathology of the that disease it can be easily understand and it all discussed in the robits and cotron for example peptic ulcer is there gastritis is there so if the peptic ulcer is going to produced due to the abnormality in the digestive system because hcl is going to more secreted and mucus layer is eradicated so if the mucus layer is going to eradicate it from the stomach wall and the more hcl is going to secrete by the parietal cell then what will happen the peptic ulcer will produced now if the peptic ulcer will produced it can be peptic ulcer it can be duodenal ulcer okay so this will causes the disease then you can understand what is the pathology what is the pathophysiology what is the pathogenesis of the this disease let me uh, give a basic examples that is not a disease but you can uh, sense it there is another sphincter except the pyloric sphincter that will be known as the esophageal sphincter that will present in your esophagus so at your uh, stomach upper part cardia there is a sphincter esophageal sphincter when this sphincter will be open you will feel the burning sensation due to the regurgitation that means the food of the stomach is comes into your esophagus after eating when the food goes into the stomach because there is a sphincter at the end of the esophagus and the starting of the stomach so with that sphincter will be open food goes into the stomach so in the stomach the acid is mixed with the foods and make it a kind but due to the some uh, mishaps if the sphincter of the uh, esophageal sphincter is remain open what will happen food with the gastric juice which goes back into the your esophagus then what will happen you will feel the burning sensation in your esophagus you will feel the chest uh, also the chest burning sensation will be there so this will only due to the opening of the esophageal sphincter and if the sphincter is closed most often it will be closed so what will happen if the sphincter will be closed then it will be goes easily to the stomach okay 
so when the churning during the churning when the food will be uh, gonna to uh, bubble it gonna to jump it so isophagal sphincter is closed so there will be no problem the food cannot be comes into the esophagus and you cannot feel the sensation of the burning sensation okay the burning of the esophagal you cannot feel it so that is the one thing gastritis is there gastritis gastritis i explained earlier that this is the causes the inflammation this means inflammation gastritis means gastric inflammation now gastric inflammation can be caused by the several ways either by there is a some abnormalities of the cell either by uh, some bacterial infection in the gastric parts in the stomach so when there is a inflammation in the gastric that will be called the gastritis okay similarly you can see uh, like the diabetes diabetes is a group of the metabolic disorder okay so when uh, our digestive system is going to uh, not properly work then diabetes can also be possible because if the digestion is not properly happen glucose uh, maybe can be high in the blood or maybe can be low in the blood so it can be hyperglycemia it can be hypoglycemia so it is another factor so robin and cotton will help you to understand about the pathophysiology of the these disease and every uh, things not only the digestive system every system having correlate with the some disease like your urinary system is there urinary system will also having several disease like glomerulonephritis is there okay so it will also uh, mention here so go through the robinson cotton also read the pathophysiology of the these disease till then thank you we will meet again in the uh, next class so thank you thank you so much